Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel. It's Cynic Alex, and today we're going to look at all 10 tier 3 characters, discuss their pros and cons, and give you more information so that you can decide who your first, second, or next tier 3 is going to be. Additionally, I'm going to include something really cool at the end of the video, so you don't want to miss that. Also, before we start the actual discussion, make sure that in addition to whatever other comments you're going to leave below today's video, you also include your in-game name for a chance to be roasted in a future video. So let's get it started with the first tier 3 character I want to discuss, Captain America. I'm not necessarily going to go in order of when the character was released, but I'm just going to list quickly their pros and cons, mainly focused around the following different aspects. Of course, the actual tier 3 skill is extremely important what the skill does, how the skill animates, what buffs it offers, um, but then you also have to look at other things related to the tier 3 skill. So you have to look at the tier 3 advancement. How much more is the stat boost from tier 2 to tier 3? Because there is definitely a difference between, let's say, Captain America's tier 2 to tier 3 stat boost and someone like Luna Snow's tier 2 to tier 3 stat boost. Additionally, a good example again being Luna Snow and Captain America, looking at the regular skills 1 to 5, because those skills play an important role in charging, thanks for the Dimension Rift, in charging the Tier 3 skill. For some characters, you can spam all of their skills 1 to 5 just in anticipation of building up 6. For other characters, 6 doesn't do as much damage. Their ultimate skill, their Tier 3 skill, doesn't do as much damage. So you want to focus and slow down and rhythmically time skills 1 to 5 to get the most damage out of them, and then sprinkle in that Tier 3 skill at the end. So with that in mind, let's take a look at Captain America first. Captain America has the number one stat boost from tier 2 to tier 3, which immediately makes him a very good character because he just gets so much stat boost. You know, you'll easily crack 50, 60,000 HP. You'll easily crack 30 to 40,000 physical attack depending on your cards. It's just fantastic. It's, he's the highest in the game. It's just how it is. Um, in addition, he has a very high damaging tier 3 skill. The tier 3 skill itself, if used correctly, Asterisk uh, does extremely high damage. Not the most of all the tier 3 skills, but very, very high. His tier 3 skill, as you can see from, this, from the text, also has a lot of buffs. Uh, but we'll talk about the buffs in a little bit more detail uh, a little bit later. The other good thing about Captain America's tier 3 is that he has a flexible skill rotation. You can either go rhythmically, you know... 3, cancel 5, 4, 2, 1, and you can take your time charging up those tier 3 skills, or you can just spam your skills because none of his skills 1 to 5 do extraordinary damage. Uh, like, for example, Thor's 5th skill does way more damage than all 5 of Captain America's skills. Uh, you could just spam them all uh, in anticipation of charging up heroic charge faster. Um, the other thing that makes Captain America a very good tier 3 is the flexibility. He can be either a combat male or a combat female, uh, which gives him exclusivity. No other tier 3 right now uh, can change their gender or their typing, so that is really important. But there are cons to Captain America, of course. Uh, unlike all of the other tier 3 skills, Captain America's tier 3 has to be charged before it's released. It's a charge and release type skill, like Hyperion's 5th skill. Yeah, seriously. Uh, so that does make it worse, that does make it harder to use, that does make the timing extremely important. Um, his tier 3 skill is not an iframe, so it can be interrupted by an enemy's iframe. Uh, his tier 3 skill also requires, because it's not an iframe, it requires either guard break immunity, or it requires you to give him somehow um, sh uh, super armor with his 5th skill, Heroic Fury, uh, combined with, I believe, his tier 2 passive. Uh, in order to not get guard broken. Otherwise, you will be guard broken, and then you will be interrupted, and then you just lose the damage from the Tier 3 skill. His Tier 3 skill does not have iframe ignore, which is a really important thing that a lot of other Tier 3 skills do have. Iframe ignore is when, even if the enemy is iframing, you can cast your skill, and it will still do damage. It will still connect. The animation will still activate. For now, you guys are very familiar with the regular Tier 2 characters who have ignore targeting or ignore iframe listed on their regular skills. So Cyclops is a really good example, that orange text there, ignore targeting, that means he can hit someone in iframe. I'm going to be referring to that as iframe ignore from now on. Same thing that Winter Soldier's new uniform fourth skill has, same thing that Nova's second skill have. Captain America's tier 3 skill does not have that. His tier 3 skill also has low AoE and it has a long animation as we've discussed. Moving along to a character that I don't actually have tier 3, but I do want to list out the pros and cons from what I've observed and from speaking to people on Discord. So thank you guys so much for helping me out with that. 
The pros to Iron Man's Tier 3 skill are that his summons will take aggro for you when they're uh, activated, so that does give him a unique uh, effect that a lot of other Tier 3s don't, well, all the other Tier 3s don't have. Um, additionally, his Tier 3 skill um, is an iframe, so it's not interruptible like Captain America, so that is really good. Uh, as, as far as his regular skills go, the majority of his damage you want to stack on his 5th skill, so that means that there's not as much priority for landing the 6th skill on the proc, so you can play it. You, you, his skill rotation basically doesn't change from tier 2 to tier 3, you just fit the 6th skill in, in between proccing using 3 cancel 5 for his regular damage proc if you're using that. Additionally, while his stat bonus is not as high as some other characters, it does synergize his HP with his newest uniform because of the shield that is 50% of his max. So that does benefit if you have Infinity War uniform, of course if you don't, uh, then that is kind of a problem. The cons of Iron Man's Tier 3 are that, as I've said already, his stat boost is lower. He's only the 6th highest stat boost from Tier 2 to Tier 3. Uh, because his clones only take 60% of his base stats, that is kind of low, and they only last for 10 seconds. Um, the Tier 3 skill does not have Ignore iframe, so he can't hit iframing targets. Um, and his Tier 3 skill has low penetration duration. His, his duration for penetrating super armor, barrier, shield, and that kind of thing only lasts for three seconds and so you basically have almost no time after the sixth skill to get off additional penetration with his other skills um, moving along the next character i want to talk about is spider-man and spider-man has a couple of things in common with captain america and a couple of things in common with uh iron man Spider-Man's Tier 3 skill has uh, really good AoE and CC. Again, I don't have this character, but I've seen him. Uh, AoE is really important because like Captain America's Tier 3, it only hits one, basically one opponent at the same time. But Spider-Man's is like a huge circular cone. So it's not really a cone, a huge circle. So it's going to hit everything around him. Uh, unlike Iron Man, though, he has six seconds of penetration, which is really good. And he's also got some additional buffs. The kind of downside to Spider-Man's Tier 3 is that he is the third lowest or the eighth overall for stat boost so he doesn't get a very large boost from tier 2 to tier 3 um, his tier 3 skill does not deal high damage on its own like Captain America's um, and the other problem is that his CC effect is pretty easily countered right now in the meta by debuff leaderships or wasps tier 2 but the good thing is that since skills 1 to 5 don't deal extraordinary damage on their own you can kind of spam them and the other good thing about spider-man to keep in mind for him and for other tier 3s is the number of iframes on their regular skills because spider-man has four or five skills iframing it makes it easier for him to stall in pvp and in one-on-one -on -one situations until he can trigger his tier 3 skill for other characters like captain america who only has a couple of iframes or iron man who only has one and a half iframes uh, it's a lot harder for them to stall uh in a one-on-one -on -one situation like timeline battle to get to that tier 3 skill in order to deal that finishing blow um on the opponent the next tier 3 i want to talk about the second last tier 3 that i don't actually have um, is Magneto and Magneto is unique in the sense that he is the only villain tier 3 uh, at the moment so he does immediately become a bit more important for you he's also extremely good for uh, extreme alliance battle he's number one for blast villain so that is another reason to consider him his tier 3 skill has very large AoE which does make it good in you know certain situations it also has very good effects it has uh, up to 80% all defense minus which is very strong for world boss ultimate and then it also gives him an 80% chance to penetrate if I can drag this up high enough so that it actually shows uh, and that lasts for seven seconds his penetration lasts for seven seconds so it's definitely long enough to get some of his other skills off the downside to Magneto's tier 3 is that his regular skills 1 to 5 deal very low damage uh, and he also has the second lowest stat boost so that really doesn't synergize very well for him and you'll find that you're kind of hitting like a towel until you build up the tier 3 skill and then you have a momentary spasm of extremely high damage uh, until the next time you rotate into the tier 3 skill the upside to Magneto's tier 3 is that you can just spam 1 to 5 there's really no good skill or best skill for his damage proc unless you're really trying to push ABX for every other game mode just spam 1 to 5 stay alive and then ram that tier 3 skill on the proc when you have uh, the opportunity his tier 3 skill while it's not an iframe does have iframe ignore uh, which does make it very good for those types of situations where uh, maybe the enemy's not iframing at first but then part way through your skill they iframe 
they'll continue to take damage. The last tier three that I want to talk about that I don't have, and again, it does make my opinion a little bit less trustworthy, but I try to do as much research as possible from YouTube videos that other people posted, Reddit posts, and of course, most uh, often, and mostly, the fantastic people on my Discord who were giving me information based on their results with their tier three characters. Uh, Black Panther, like Captain America, like the other combat type, has very high boost in base stats. His tier 2 to tier 3 base stats are number 2 in the game, behind only, you guessed it, Captain America. So that does make him possibly flexibly good for PvP, because he just gets so much uh, extra defense, so much extra HP. Um, his tier 3 skill is an iframe, and it also has a really high ignore dodge buff. It has a 100% buff uh, of ignore dodge for 5 seconds, so that does make it... Uh, potentially strong against specific opponents, and it also has a long d penetration duration, 7 seconds of uh, penetration. The bad part about uh, Black Panther kind of stems from his uniform, but it's also kind of his base uh, abilities. Black Panther has never really had strong base uh, attacks, and with his new uniform, really, still his only strong attack in terms of damage is Unseen Predator. Skills 1 to 4 deal very low damage, and so because of that, it does lower his overall damage. You could decide to either trigger your proc on 5 or on 6, but outside of that, you do need to pay attention to your procs if you're using a damage proc, because if you proc on 1, 2, 3, or 4, if you're just spamming skills, you're going to see an extremely sharp decline in your damage, uh, and so because of that, it's a bit harder. His tier 3 skill also doesn't have Ignore I for frame and so it does uh you know make it weaker if the timing is bad but it is an iframe so it's harder for him to um or to get interrupted once he casts the skill uh successfully moving on to the rest of the tier threes that i all have uh the first one up is sharon rogers one of the newest tier threes uh, her tier 3 is pretty interesting. It's got the very unique benefit of having um, stats that apply to all allies. It gives them immunity, and it gives them 50% damage reduction. So even if the immunity is penetrated, they have a 50% damage reduction that can't be penetrated. The skill lists one second, but it actually lasts on a refreshing one second timer for the duration of the bubble, which I've tracked to be about 5 to 7 seconds, depending on the kind of situation that you're in and depending on how soon you finish the skill. So that does mean that you have a very powerful effect for three versus three situations, Alliance Tournament, Alliance Conquest, and certain Shadowland stages, not that you would necessarily need it. Uh, you won't really need it for Shadowland because her tier three skill deals insane damage. It's probably the highest single target skill in the game in terms of just boom damage. Uh, Gambit's is close, but it has all defense down, so it's a bit skewed in terms of its actual true damage. Um, additionally, her tier 3 skill has a moderate AoE, but it can be dodged, and, and it has a very long penetration duration, 10 seconds of full penetration. Just keep in mind, her penetration does not include super armor, so you won't be able to guard break opponents, uh, even if they don't have guard break immunity with her tier 3 skill, and she lost the super armor guard break or the super armor penetration on her fifth skill with the new uniform, so she doesn't have that. The disadvantages to Sharon Rogers tier 3 is that it's not an iframe, despite having a very short iframe at the beginning, so you can be interrupted after she jumps up into the air, um, and it also has, she also has a lower stat boost in comparison. I think, personally, some people may think that Sharon Rogers is a bad tier 3 because her tier 3, and just herself as a character, doesn't fit perfectly well into into one game mode to dominate, um, but I'm just trying to look at these tier 3 characters uh, as they compare to one another rather than seeing where they best fit in, because frankly there aren't any game modes possibly outside of pushing very high level world boss and maximizing your ABX scores, there's really no other game mode that necessitates a tier 3 character. Uh, you can definitely complete GBR with tier 2 characters maxed out. So that is something to consider. Next up, I want to talk about Luna Snow, and unfortunately, Luna Snow has the lowest, number one lowest, number 10, uh, stat boost. She has the lowest stat boost of any tier 3, but that does kind of clash with the fact that her skills themselves deal extremely high base damage. They're all very close to 100, if not over 100% of her energy attack stat. Uh, additionally, her tier 3 skill is the only to provide a continuous heal. Like Sharon Rogers, it says 1 second of HP, but that continues to tick, so you can heal for like 30 or 28 or 35% of your uh, HP over the duration of the skill. It deals elemental damage, which is again the only tier 3 skill to do so. Uh, it also has iframe ignore, which makes it very strong, and it has 6 seconds of penetration. It doesn't have, an, the tier 3 skill itself doesn't have an iframe, so you can be interrupted, but she has iframe ignore, so it's kind of odd, um, and because 
the tier three skill has a long um, charge up or a, sh a short charge up because of her skills, uh, it kind of is at odds with her regular rotation because on the one hand, she has the fastest tier three charge up because of Encore, her passive that allows skills one, two, and three to be kind of repeti repetitively cast. But then on the other hand, you're trying to proc on her third skill, and with the sixth skill introduction, it kind of makes it more awkward to time that proc every seven seconds correctly. Moving along, we have Ant-Man, uh, the second to last tier three that I want to talk about. Ant-Man is small. Let's just put it that way. Although he has the fourth overall highest stat boost, it really doesn't help him enough. Uh, the problem with Ant-Man is that all of his skills, including maximum size, deal low damage. So even though he has over 30,000 physical attack, it just doesn't matter. His skills just deal so little damage uh, that it just doesn't uh, seem like he's getting much of a bump. Um, additionally, his fourth skill cannot be canceled once it starts, uh, Flying Rush, so it does make it harder to spam skills to get his proc up because even if you spam them, you have to wait for the full duration of his fourth skill to finish before you can even cast his sixth skill, which does also make timing his proc a little bit harder. The good thing about his tier three skill is that it's got a large AoE, it's got some targeting issues, but it also has ignore iframe, which is nice. It's got 10 seconds of penetration and 10 seconds of invincibility, which is also nice. Uh, so he does have that uh, going for him. Um, but like I said, with the low damage and the long animation, it does make his tier three skill seem a bit less uh, fantastic compared to some of these other characters. The last one I want to talk about, if you've been here and you're, you've hung on for the duration of the video, is Deadpool. Uh, Deadpool is interesting because he's the only tier three character right now that doesn't have a uniform. So you have to consider that. In, in regards to his overall potential uh, now and in the future because he's basically guaranteed to get a uniform at some point which will only make him, you guessed it, stronger. Um, his tier 3 skill is very good because it's an iframe. It's a full iframe and it has iframe ignore so it's possibly one of the most painful skills to deal with because you basically cannot dodge it under any circumstances. The downside to his tier 3 skill is that it's a long animation so the damage is not concentrated over 1 or 2 seconds. It's kind of spread spread out over almost five seconds because of that it makes it harder for him to kill strong healers so makes it harder for him to kill himself Deadpool tier three because he's constantly healing while he's taking damage in the future Wolverine may be a good counter to tier three Deadpool's maximum effort because he's a combat type and because he also has that healing ability that allows him to uh, as he's taking damage recover very quickly um, his tier three skill is also very famous for having up to 100% all defense down which makes him arguably the best character for world boss ultimate in terms of pushing stages in terms of lowering the enemy's defense and just plowing through them with an insane proc um, and it also has six seconds of uh, penetration with an 80% chance the downside to uh, Deadpool's tier three is that the most important downside is it's more expensive his tier three skill or his tier three advanced costs 1200 CCF um, instead of the regular 800 and then you also have the Phoenix feathers and you also have the epic quest to consider um, and then his tier 3 skill doesn't offer him any other buffs other than the penetration and one 50% uh, increased damage buff for seven seconds so it seems I forgot about Thor the first time around when I was editing the video I realized it so really quickly let's talk about Thor's tier 3 uh, like Captain America and Black Panther he has a really high base stat boost from tier 1 to tier from tier 2 to tier 3 so you will see a large jump in his HP uh, and his energy attack which will always possibly make him relevant for game modes depending on his uniform however one of the cons of his tier 3 skill is that it doesn't do much much damage. Thunder Blow is just kind of weak. And so you're much better off timing rhythmically uh, to land your proc on his fifth skill, Force of the Thunder God, because it does way more damage than his sixth skill. Because of that, it does slow down the number of tier three skills that you're able to get off because overall you'll have less damage if you just spam one, two, three, four, five. You don't pay attention to the proc just to get more sixth skills. Of course, it doesn't matter if you're building him for PvP, but it does matter for any kind of PvE game mode, Extreme Alliance Battle, and things uh, like that. But the other pros of his uniform, or of his uh, uh, skill, his tier three skill, is that it has a short animation, which means it's more difficult to be interrupted or to kind of go wrong. Um, it also has uh, iframe ignore, which is nice, uh, and it's an iframe, so it's both 
untargetable while he's attacking, and then it can also hit characters who are untargetable. Uh, the four seconds of penetration are low, but he also gives himself five seconds of invincibility and four seconds of 80% ignore dodge, so that is nice. However, keep in mind that because part of his damage uh, is reduced by, or is kind of activated or related to lightning damage, shock damage, which is a dot effect like burn uh, or chill, uh, it is uh, immune against world bosses, so they won't take any damage, so a lot of his tier 3 damage, a lot of that 70% shock damage that kind of residually uh, stays on the ground is just kind of t completely ignored, it's reduced to zero by certain game modes, which does lower his damage overall. So with that being said, that is my kind of pros and cons list of all the tier 3 characters. If you kind of fell asleep midway through the video, or if you weren't paying attention, or if you were driving or something, I want to show you this, which is something that I've put together to list on the uh, kind of master guide that I continue to work on. I'm really proud of this, um, and this basically summarizes all of the information and more that I gave you in today's video. So it answers questions like, how good is their stat boost? Uh, compared to the other ones. How good is their tier 3 skill DPS? And you can kind of just read these and understand what they mean in relation to uh, the character. I tried to list as many things as possible that are related to the tier 3 skill, so I tried to be as exhaustive as possible. In terms of listing the, ch the tier 3 charge speed to compare characters like Luna Snow and someone like Thor or Captain America, I did an average cooldown duration of their skills. Uh, that does weigh in because... Even if you spam 1 to 5, you still have to wait for the cooldowns uh, before you can spam them again. This is the cooldown without 50%, so you just cut it in half if you have max skill cooldown from cards and from your uh, alliance. I listed some important tier 3 buff effects that the characters get, the AoE, the average skill 1 to 5 DPS, which is also important for characters like Black Panther or Ant-Man who just have super low base damage. And then I tried to list some best used uh, game modes for these characters. Now... The last thing I want to hit you guys up with is my personal top 10 ranking. Uh, and again, this is subjective, and this for me weighs in more towards the character's future potential. Because while I did mention during the video that Sharon Rogers doesn't have any g dedicated game mode, you know, if, if Cable didn't exist and if the Blast Day was male and female, she would be number one for that day. But because the, it is the way it is, because the game has been designed the way it's been designed, Sharon Rogers seems to kind of just float around, but her potential is undeniably strong. She has extremely high DPS on her tier 3 skill, her base skills deal extremely high damage, she has damage reduction, and her tier 3 offers buffs, super defensive buffs, to her teammates. So undeniably, I have to rank her number 2 because of her future potential, and if any game modes come out, if GBR gets harder and introduces new bosses, uh, the fact that she has that tier 3 is just going to, the potential of the tier 3 skill and the value of it is just going to skyrocket. Deadpool, uh, as I mentioned, because he doesn't have a uniform. Just imagine how much stronger he's going to be with a uniform. Imagine if his uniform gives him any kind of effects that are meta, uh, like ignore dodge or something else, if it enhances his heal. There's just so many ways they can take it. Damage reduction, uh, he'll be an absolute nightmare even though he already is a nightmare and he's already vying for, you know, the top three in both PvE and PvP. Uh, Captain America, the, the, the challenge with him is definitely learning his Tier 3 skill, but the stat boost is undeniably strong and it makes him relevant for PvP despite the fact that he has very little relevance in PvP otherwise and he has none at Tier 2. Um, and then the, the rest of the list kind of just breaks down that way. The reason why I put Magneto above Thor is because, honestly, Thor's tier 3 skill is kind of lackluster, and the lightning damage is easily countered by world bosses with the shock immunity, and also elemental resistances from high resistant characters like Thanos for PvP. And he's the only universal type, so we're bound to get better ones in the future. I think his value is kind of inflated because he's all alone in the universal class right now. Magneto I put ahead of him because Magneto's uniform sucks, and Magneto's skills suck, but his tier 3 skill is fantastic. He's got to increase damage against both humans and uh, machines, so again, his potential is huge. They just need to realize it with a better uniform. And then that list at the end kind of rounds itself out. Um, I think Black Panther definitely has an opportunity to skyrocket a lot closer up on the list if he can get a uniform rework 
in the vein of someone like Captain America or in the vein of someone like Luna Snow, where just he gets huge buffs to all his attacks, but we'll have to wait and see. So let me know what you guys thought of the list. Let me know what you think of this guide for Tier 3 characters. Let me know who your next Tier 3 is, and if I've influenced you or not... Subscribe if you enjoy the content and you want to support me. And of course, if you like what you see, I hope to see you again tomorrow. Take care.